DynamoDB has support for transactions. So what is a transaction? This represents a change that will occur to the database if any dependent conditions fail, and then a transaction will roll back as if the database changes never occurred. I think at one point DynamoDB didn't have transactions, and that was um, uh, one of the reasons why people are like, well, that's why we use um, RDS databases, or sorry, uh, relational databases, because uh, they are ACID compliant. Uh, but it looks like DynamoDB has bolted on that functionality, so that is great. And if you're wondering what ACID stands for, it is for atomacy, uh, <laughs> atomacy, I can't say it, consistency, isolation, and durability. So what I want to do is give you an example of a transaction so you can conceptualize it. Uh, and these transactions work really well, like especially when you're thinking about money, where you have to have multiple steps before something goes through before you release money. So uh, the way it works is that if any of these steps fail, then the transaction will immediately fail and roll back the changes. So the first thing is we create a new payee, and then we go ahead and we verify that the email is correct format before sending out the money. But it turns out that it's not, and so what happens is it stops and rolls back, so none of these actions actually occurred. So that is, in a nutshell, transactions. But let's look at it in more detail. So now we're going to look at how DynamoDB transactions work since we just covered conceptually what transactions are. So DynamoDB offers the ability to perform transactions at no additional cost using two functions they have, which is transact write items and transact get items. You'll notice one says write and one says get, uh, and that's when you want to group together a bunch of write actions or get actions. Um, so those are your limitations there. Uh, the transactions allow for all or nothing changes to uh, multiple items both within and across tables. Uh, notice that it says across, so you can do this with multiple tables. Um, DynamoD will perform two underlying reads or writes for every item in the transaction, one to prepare the transaction, one to commit the transaction. So that is going to consume your RCUs or WCUs. Um, so there is a little bit of extra cost there, but it's negligible. You shouldn't even think about it. These two underlying read and write operations are visible in your Amazon CloudWatch metrics. So if you're wondering, if you want to keep track of that stuff, that's where you can check it. Uh, you can use condition check with DynamoDB transactions to do preconditional check. If that doesn't make sense, uh, this is another explanation. So it checks that an item exists or to check the condition of a specific, uh, specific attributes of the item. So it's just a way of doing uh, a check before you run that transaction. So that is the specifics of a DynamoDB transaction.